Now, y'all let me know. I'm getting ready to show y'all this video. Let me see how we look right here. You guys let me know if you can hear this, okay? Let me know if y'all can hear this part. Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police department uh, to the commission of the schools. Can you guys, first of all, before I even go any further, can you guys hear that? Okay, appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. Okay, appreciate it. <laughs> they said a do over. All right, I'm about to take y'all back to it. It's not going to take long for me to go over. You guys already heard my points on this. But uh, so we're gonna go through this real fast. Here we go. Just, let him say his point. Thank you. He said, Let him see right there. Charlemagne said, Let him say his point because she kept on cutting him off. Watch this Fox News all the time as well. So, let job, sir. I asked, What system did we create? What Here we go. Okay, let's talk about the create? system of one yeah, of the let largest. Him, let him say his point. Thank you. There you go. Let him say his point. One of the systems of one of the largest uh, uh cities in America, Baltimore. And again, I have to keep pausing this so they don't shut my video down, y'all. So sorry. Uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody a few years ago. Uh, the mayor was black. Mayor was black. Now watch this. The head of the police department was black. Number two. Uh, it's not person. in charge of the system. There she go. Cutting them off. But go ahead. Number two person. Go ahead. She said. In charge of the police department was black. All Still of, not in all charge of all the city council. So Democrats, majority black. Six Still not in charge of the system. Wow. See, that's why he's going to say, wow. Wow. Six, That's a off position. six officers charged. Three of them were black. But before I go, before I forget my train of thought on this, when she says still not in charge of the system, they're just a position within the person who's in charge of the system. What are they? Are they just like an invisible entity? You know what I'm trying to say? She's saying still not in charge of the system. That's just a position. Uh, whoever's in charge of it has a position. See what I'm saying? Anyway. A judge before whom two of the officers tried their case, found him not guilty, was black. Black. Still uh, not the, in charge of the, the system. The, the uh, no. city. Uh, 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 see when she just threw him off like that that's what I'm trying to tell y'all the fact that she's even just keep on saying still not in charge of the system still not see they do things like that to try to derail you to throw off your train of thought which she kind of did a little bit there with Larry Elder and it becomes a point to where it's not even about compromise it's not even about talking trying to arrive to a conclusion it's all about I just want to be divisive and argumentative intendant of public schools was black the county superintendent of public schools is black uh, the attorney general at the time, Loretta Lynch, is black, as was the president of the United States, was black. All these people. And yet, still not people, in charge of the system. So she don't see. Well, 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 Wanda Sykes said uh, when when uh, when Barack Obama got elected, how are you going to complain about the man when you are the man? Now, from the president to the attorney general to the state attorney uh, to the mayor to the head of the police. To uh huh. I have to keep pausing it. I have to keep pausing it. I have to keep pausing and talking so it don't get taken. I'm just letting y'all know. Department uh, to the commission of the schools in the city and in the county uh, to the majority of city council in that city. All of them are black. All of them. But she's still going to say. And you're still saying that we don't run anything. So who's in charge? All these uh, school board, city council, the mayor, golly, all, the, all these officials that are look just like me, black. But her thing, she's going to keep on saying, still not in charge of the system. No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I, I challenged a lot of those black. No, in the beginning. Now, she said, OK, watch this. Listen to what she just said right here. No, no, no. I, I said who created the system. I didn't say we didn't run anything. I See, what does that have to do? Man, this is what I'm saying. What does that have to do with anything? Who created the systems? You're going to say, oh. Why people did. But here's the thing behind that, though. Here's the thing behind that. She would sit there and she would say the ones who created this system, the ones that created the system are white people. White people created the system. OK, who keeps on voting and agreeing with that system to be implemented to black people? Who keeps voting for it? Black people. So what are you talking about? This is what I'm saying. This is why I told y'all, y'all have no, I'm telling y'all, look, listen to me. Y'all have no idea. <laughs> y'all have no idea. I tick so many people off. I do. If I know when I'm, I hate to even say debate, when I'm having a conversation like what they're having right here, when I know that this is actually turning from 
us trying to arrive to a solution and it's all about you just trying to be argumentative, vindictive, just trying to throw some slogan and stuff out there. I know how to turn the gears on and end up making you get pissed off because then I start playing the game right back at you. And I, I mean, I haven't, I'm not bragging on myself, but I haven't come across somebody that actually is going to beat me at that. I will play your game right back at you. If we want to sit here and play stupid and play dumb and all that, I'm going to do it right back with you. Who's in charge of the system? You are. No, we not. The white people are. Well, who keeps on voting those people in to do what they're doing? See, that's what I'm saying. They'll sit there and try to flip things around. We don't, we ain't look at her. We ain't look. We, that's what who's in charge of the system. But then we'll sit there and say, we don't have no representation, diversity, equity, inclusion. But then when you get that, that still is not enough. Black city council, black mayor, black senators, black superintendent, black school board, head of the police is black. The sergeant is black. The mayor is black. And at the time, the president was black. But we still don't see what I'm saying. What do you so what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? I mean, God dang, the God dang on president. The president was black. And you still saying who in charge of the system. See what I'm saying? My point is saying all that is that when it comes down to it, you don't want to write. You don't want the answer. You don't want you don't you know, you're really not trying to this. You're really not trying to solve the problem. You want to know why? Because it's not one. It's not one. You got all the representation of black folks in all these positions, and that still is not enough. But then yet when there is not any black people in these positions that we deem to be very important, all of a sudden we have a problem. There's no black representation. We don't see none of us in these high power positions. But then when they are in those high power positions, your argument is that's just the position. That's crazy. This is why I say. That particular type of mindset is why we lose. That mindset is why we lose. That's why black people lose. Because they are teaching you on a subconscious level to do nothing more than to be argumentative. And thinking because you keep saying, that's not in charge of the system. That's not in charge of the system. That's not in charge of the system. That's why we keep losing. No matter what you do, I just want to be a victim. I just want to cry. I just want to say that's not solving the problem. That's not solving the problem. That's not solving the problem. But if you want to get down to the nitty gritty of what actually is in charge of the system, what is this in regards to? Black people being massively incarcerated. We still got a systemic racist issue going on. No, what you got going on is a systemic home issue. That's what you got going on. But they don't want to get to that. See, that's the thing. No matter what, when it ever comes, no matter what, ladies and gentlemen, people get mad. And he even did it in his video when they don't want to address the main nucleus of why all these things are happening amongst the black community and they don't want to address that you don't want to be wives to your husbands men a lot of y'all have become completely weak not only are they sterilizing and chemically castrating y'all on a on a um a physiological level but it's also happening to a lot of you men on a spiritual level that's why they want to obliterate the roles of what men are supposed to do and what men, men and women are supposed to do. Because if they do that, they're going to destroy the biggest threat to this world and to this system. And that's family. That is family. But see, they don't want to do that. We got so many issues. We got to see you're never going to get rid of these so-called systemic or these made up issues if you don't have somebody that's in the house taking care of family, being a man, being a husband, being a father. They can easily get these children like that because I guarantee you that my mentorees and my children, my sons, they, they can't, they, they, that type of talking right there, she can't even remotely closely even scratch the surface of getting into my kids and my mentee's head because they see around the BS. They see around the BS. So then what does she want? What would this woman want? Let me see if I can play some more of this video. I challenge a lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said, who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know, oh, so you're, saying, you're, you're, you're basically still. saying that they're, just, so, they're black faces that are still in those positions. So, 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 
So hold on. So this is what I love right here. See, again, I'm, I, I know I might be repeating myself, but listen to this. A lot of those black leaders, by the way. I said, who, when we talk about the system, who, what black people have been in charge of any system? What black people have been in charge of any system? Your house. The answer, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all don't hear nothing else I say tonight, the answer lies in your house house that is the most important system that any person can be in charge of besides these so-called jobs that pay you money the most important system any human being man and woman can be in charge of that will have a phenomenal impact on this world is you as a family that is the reason why this awesome book made a statement in there it said how can you take care of the church or the people of God? How can you take care of them if you don't have your own home in order? That's why they want to get into the children's lives, into your homes, through the internet, through social media. They want to get in there and bestow their ideology on you because they know if they disrupt the flow of how a family is supposed to operate, they're no, they know that they're going to end up being completely devastated. They know that when they interrupt that family unit, they got your kids. They got you as a man. They got you as a woman. They got you and husband and wives, boyfriend and girlfriend, potentially people that are affianced, whatever. They got y'all bumping heads already before y'all even get married. People that are married because these mainstream media ideologies have been putting y'all here with this radical feminist movement and all that, and men are being chemically castrated, emotionally castrated. They know we got y'all. They go after the family. That's it. So when she say what unit, what, what system have black people been in charge of, you should have been in charge of your family. If you were in charge of your family, you wouldn't have to sit there and worry about all this nonsense that actually is doing nothing more than keeping people back based off of nothing more than perception. That's it. That's it. This is when things become dangerous. And this is why I like, guys, some of y'all maybe have seen me on some different panels or whatnot. Y'all will know that when I go on some of these panels, I will sit back and I will not say nothing. If I know a lot of times that the conversation is not going anywhere and I'm doing some documentation, I will sit there and I will document because when I when I get when my when Ty's brain says, Oh, this is just about to be just for argument's sake, it's not about it's not about getting ready to arrive to a conclusion and actually try to solve the issue. This is just about I'm trying to prove my point. I'm trying to prove my point. Agree with me, agree. I'm just trying to prove my point. Just look at what I I, I'm, I'm done. I just check out because I know that the conversation is not going anywhere. And then what's amazing is that I've done this for so long. I've had so much experience when it comes to having these certain types of conversations. When I realize that that is not the road that you're trying to go down, because in these people's mind, if they feel that they are losing a conversation, which is terrible for people to even be like that, if they feel that they're losing a the conversation, they become prideful and all they want to do is battle it out. Once I realize that spirit coming from them and that's all it wants to do, I'm going to let you have it. There ain't no fixing this. And some of these things that I'm talking about, some of these things that I'm talking about is this. A lot of things that you can learn that can help you on an emotional, spiritual level, you can learn it from a physical level. What are you talking about, Ty? In medicine. If you came to me and we were to discuss a problem that you're having. Listen to me real carefully. See, individuals like myself, whether you white or black, once we understand and see these issues and we've overcome them, we no longer deal with these symptoms of systemic, whatever they want to call it, because we see past the BS. We've overcome that. It's no longer a symptom of ours. See what I'm saying? See, systemic racism is no longer a systemic racism is no longer a symptom that thrives within my spirit or within my emotions because once i got the antidote for it or got the medicine for it i took care of it it doesn't bother me anymore it doesn't it doesn't have no effect on me anymore see we got these things that happen in medicine called hypochondriacs we got these things in there where if people cannot have anything going on with them they have no physical effects that's messing with them they they just it's nothing going on so we call them medicine seeking or they might be drug seeking they just want to be a victim just to get the, just for the attention, but they're really not trying to fix the issue. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying is this. If you and I come together on a physical level and you tell me that you have a problem, again, I don't have a problem. 
you have a problem. Your problem is I am suffering from the perception that's greater than reality that's saying that systemic racism is holding me back. You're telling me that. Now, you're telling me that systemic racism is holding you back as a black person. And I'm telling you, I used to suffer from that as well. I used to suffer from systemic racism deranged syndrome. Ty, your next question should be, Ty, how did you get over it? I'll tell you how I got over it. I went into those very same systems and I found out it was all in my head. It was all in my head. Yes, systemic racism syndrome was all in my head. Now, I'm not saying that there's not racist people because there's racist people on both sides. I'm not saying that there might be some small establishment, some family owned establishment that they don't hire certain looking people. I'm not saying that doesn't exist. But what I am saying, what they were telling me to look for systemic racism in and all these big major places, it was not there. I'm just telling you, well, just because you didn't see it doesn't mean it don't know. Then guess what? How about you go and see it? Since you are so sure that it does exist and it does impede on your life, show it to me. Two years since I've gone viral with critical race theory and all that, nobody has been able to come and show me. Don't argue with me. Don't yell at me. You can tell me all day long. You're wrong. You don't know nothing about CRT. But well, since you know all about critical race theory, how about you take me and show me? Take a wild guess how many people were able to do it. Take a wild guess at how many people were able to take me into some establishment and show me where CRT needs to be taught because if it's not taught, it's going to be more of a detriment on any black person's life. Show, nobody's been able to show me. But I'm, I'm, I'm the token. See what I'm saying? My point is this. Whenever you come to me and you want to discuss an issue, Okay, let me slow down. Ty, I have a headache. Really? Where? What does it feel like? Well, it feels like it's just on one side. Ty, I have a headache. It's clustered. It just, Ty, I have a headache. It seems like it, it hurts every time my heart beats. Ty, I have a headache. It gets intense and then it goes down. What am I going to tell you? Well, these type of headaches that you may have, maybe X, Y, Z. Ty, my headache is so bad, it's blinding and it causes me to throw up. Well, you know what? That's beyond a headache. That's a migraine. So the reason why you're telling me this and the reason why we're discussing it is because you expect me to give you some info that can help you. I would say, hey, there's all type of different things out there you can try. There's Tylenol, or, you know, acetaminophen. There's naproxen. You know, there's um, there's all sorts of different medication out there that you can take to help with that pain. There's Oxycontin. There's all types of different medication that may help with your pain. But what you should do, go try some over-the-counter things first. And if that doesn't work, you might want to go to your doctor. He might be able to give you something stronger. If you come to me telling me about these headaches that you have, and I'm giving you the answer, and all you want to do is argue, nope, no, no, that's not. Did you try it? No, I just know that it's not going to help me. Well, who controls the medicine? What? I thought you, I thought you had a headache. I do. But I thought you was telling me that, you, that it hurts real bad. It does. Did you go try to, did you go try to see the benefit? No, I did not. Why? Because I don't think it's going to work. But did you go and try it? No. Okay, well, what about a naproxen? No. What about ibuprofen? No. What about aspirin? No. Did you go to your doctor? No. Then what are you going to do? I'm just going to sit back and keep on complaining about my headache because I just want it to be known that I got a headache and I'm pissed off. I'm a mad black man with a headache. I'm a mad black woman with a headache. So you don't want me to help with the headache no i don't want you to help with my headache i just want you to hear me and agree with me that i have a headache and nothing's gonna fix it no i'm gonna agree with you that you got a headache but i'm not gonna agree that nothing's gonna fix it so in other words i'm going to agree with you that you are suffering from systemic racism systemic racism syndrome i i agree with you on that but i disagree that nothing's gonna fix it you don't want it to be fixed all you want to do is keep on crying about it so you know what with that being said Good luck with living with that headache for the rest of your life. But I won't be tortured by that. I want to get rid of the problem, but you don't. That's what I'm saying. This is exactly what I'm saying, folks. That type of thinking. That type of thinking. Is the reason why. Black people lose and they have no idea. 
that they have been conditioned and trained to do nothing more than to be argumentative and deny any type of solutions and truth. We cry about, we want to, oh, I don't want this headache. It hurts so bad. My head hurts so bad. Here, can you at least try one of these medications? Nope, nope, because I already, people told me, and no. But you, so you rather suffer? That's the struggle of us all. That we See, that's what I'm saying. As black people, that's what I'm saying. We gonna struggle. That's, that's, that's the prop. But you don't want to try the medications. That type of thinking is the reason why black people are losing. Let me see if there's something else in here. I'm not talking about a position. I'm not talking about a mayor. You know, oh, so you're, saying, you're, you're, you're basically saying that they're, just, so, they're black faces that are still in correct. those positions, so, but they're so, still correct. being part Similar of Similar to you, Mr. So, Elder, so, you're so, a black face in, in a position in the conservative movement. They're they're just the same. They're just on. They say the same stuff to me. You're a black face that's in a conservative movement and blah, blah, blah. As But then want to use that as excuses if I'm being controlled. You see what I'm saying? They use that like that like me. I tell people, look, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. Don't even box me like that. I cannot be boxed. That's why, according to my channel, let me take a time right now to let y'all know about my channel. If any of you guys ever took the time in your day to go through my YouTube channel, it's a reason why I call it a variety channel. I do a lot of things on my channel. My point is saying all that people expect folks that's in medicine to act a particular type of way. I don't. Ty. You also do. I do. I do so much. You, you mentor. You go into speaking engagements. You act. You, you're a director. Um, you actually host a radio show and all that. You do all that. Yes, because you're not going to be able to box somebody like me. That's the whole point of being free. Once you see how free you are, nobody just going. You're just not going to limit me to just being the medical professional. You're not going to do that and just keep me there. No, I can be a medical professional. I can show you how to fix your car. I can show you how to fix things around your house. I can show you how to cook some things, show you how to barbecue. I can sit there and be on the radio. I can go to speaking engagements. I can mentor young kids. I can show you how to be a better man, a better husband, a better father. But you're not going to box me based off of one position. I'm not going to be boxed. That's the issue. And by not being boxed, I am a person that does what I want to do, period. So when you see people like her, well, you were black face tie and you're conservative. Uh, no, that's just an aspect of it. And by being conservative, what are you trying to say? As if being conservative means that I'm controlled. You see what I'm saying? If I have some conservative views and values, you're, you're saying that's not of my own thinking. That's where it gets dangerous at right there when they try to put that on you like that. Let me see if I can get this up again. On the other side, I'm talking about. So then, so then, so then, so then, when Martin Luther King said in 1966, "I believe there could be a black president uh, in about 40 years' time," then it really doesn't matter, right? But there's one, or isn't no, yeah, so nothing, it, nothing it, changes. He, he was, he was well, naive. The he was naive also then. Killed him as well. The, well, we know that the FBI and the CIA also killed him. That system. You realize that, correct? Wow. <laughs> No matter what. An individual killed him. Here we go. Right. That was also a part of Crow Hotel through the system. Point of See, that's what I'm saying. That ideology. The white man, y'all. The white, the system, the white man did. It's always going to be somebody's fault. Correct? Uh, not correct. Hotel Pro. Not, not, not correct. He was so killed. the FBI didn't have anything to do with it. The CIA didn't have anything to do with yeah, it. Edgar Hoover was definitely on Martin's ass. Like, come on. I didn't. I didn't say he wasn't. No. Uh, Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps. But uh -oh. to say that the FBI killed him, I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no, no, I, yeah, that that's I, that's I, a pretty I, serious I, I, charge. Uh, see, see what I'm saying? So what will happen when Larry Elder just sat there and just listen to this? Hold on. Yeah, yeah I killed him. Uh. Robert Kennedy is the one that approved the wiretaps. But to say that the FBI killed him? I mean, what's your evidence of that? Oh, no. Now, this is what I was going to say. When it comes to something like that, that's where the baiting and stuff gets in, when you bait somebody in. See, we can't do nothing because the FBI killed the black man. So you end up saying the whole entire FBI. See what I'm saying? This is where stuff can get dangerous. But what I'm saying is that if you got young little black children growing up, hearing these conversations like that woman right there, those kids will take that as being truth. And when they grow up, instead of actually going and researching stuff themselves, they will rely on what that woman said and use that only as a talking point. 
Uh uh-uh, the FBI, they racist too. They killed Martin Luther King. That's what they would do. That's what they taught us to do. Whether they try to or not, that's exactly what they taught us to do. That's exactly how they taught us to speak. That's exactly how they taught us to uh, respond to things like this. Give me a second here to play some more of this, folks. See if I can... uh... Well, we ain't shut down yet, so apparently um, not doing too bad here as far as trying to keep these... uh, Keep this video playing a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's I, that's I, a pretty I, serious I, I charge. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Bad people on gays' rights. When people tell about whether or not it is right or it is wrong. Hold on. Anti-black is segregation was self-inflicted. Who could not have crossed this? Go from no problem. So why are you rights commission? He finished a black vote. To Republican Party got sometimes people. Absolutely. Well, how is it? How is it, uh, Charlemagne, that Donald Trump got eight percent of the black vote? As many blacks. Uh, then any other question you said if you're going to go after it in america go after it in africa go after it. and you won't let me finish go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, thank you that that i cut you off then i try to answer your question you won't let me finish go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Larry. thank you it's a waste of time we ought to be talking about working hard investing in ourselves right now as we speak there are haitians uh, in haiti lining up for a lottery to come into this country yep why because it is the land of the free and the home of the brave you can go from nothing to something faster in america uh, than any so y'all hear what Larry Elder is saying, right? You guys hear what he's saying and what you can do in America. See, here's the thing. That's why when I mentor our young people, all I do is tell them what they can do. That's all we do. We tell them what they can do and we show them what they can do. And then we go and get people from all walks of life. Now, listen to me. I have this. Now, look, y'all can take this the wrong way. This is why. I don't now, even though we got a lot of black people that that helps out in our programs. Even though we got a lot of black people to help out in our programs, I'm just telling y'all this. This is why I have all walks of life, every color of the spectrum and different races. Come and talk to our mentorees. You want to know why my mentees want to know why? Because I want to show them that whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are Asian, whether you are Indian, when they go through school and become these certain people in these certain positions, whether they are in cybersecurity, an IT tech specialist, doctor, nurse, uh, got their uh, MBA, no matter what, they all share the same stories about struggling through college, having to study all night, you know, eating maybe once a day, studying, holding. What I do is I show all those little black kids that no matter what color they are, that everybody is going through the same exact process, no matter what color. I don't tell them now, y'all. Now, see, there's no such thing as black people. No, what they see is that no matter who you are, you're still going to go through the same exact type of things when you go through college. But then I let them know it's doable. I let them know that it's easy. That's all we, the issue that a lot of people have right now is that you have a problem with actually showing them the way. One of the worst things we can do is take, look like one of the things I do, I don't tell them that it's hard work. I don't tell them work hard because I'm just being honest with you guys. A lot of us, even me growing up, I don't know what that means. What do you mean work hard? I don't know what that means when you tell me to work hard through school. What does that mean? I, you know, in other words, I couldn't comprehend what you were trying to say to me. But since I know that and I'm a person that I learned based off, of, I'm a kinesio learner. I have to touch it, feel it, see it, the whole nine, right? So what I'm saying that for is when you have these people come in and talk to these young kids, we allow these kids to go there. And what I love about this is that we don't limit them. I don't care if you're 10 years old, 11, 12, 13. If you can take these kids to some of these job places and spark something in them and show them how it can be done and they can do it, this stuff sticks with these kids in their hearts and in their minds. They get excited about it. They go home thinking about it. They go home dreaming about it. They talk to their parents about it. But one of the things that I always tell the parents to do, look, when your child says to you, Mom, I'm going to be an engineer. Mom, I'm going to be like Mr. Ty. Mom, I'm going to be a doctor. Mom, I'm going to be a lawyer. Mom, I'm going to be a nurse. Mom, I'm going to be a therapist. When you say things like that, these kids going to do that. What I tell the parents do, you tell them, yes, you sure are. Don't say, no, now that might be too hard. Well, no, Ty, don't you dare say anything like that to them. 
Don't say anything like that to them at all. You tell them, yes, you are, baby. Yes, you can. You sure are going to do that. You're going to make mommy so proud. You're going to make dad so proud. What? You want to be an engineer? Woo wee. That, ooh, you sure can do it. And then you take these kids to these, you take these kids to these areas, to these jobs. I don't care. Like I said, 10 years old. Yes. 10 years old. Can we take them to a, yeah, they can come in, they can come to, um, like the facilities that I manage over, if these kids have an interest in medicine, I take them there. Let me show you the people that are direct over. Let me show you what the nurse does. Let me show you what she does when she comes in there. Let these little kids, y'all, this, this is why I say, and I, no, I'm just saying, you know, Donald Trump got a, he, he took, he took a t-shirt from me out. When, when I went to go, when we had a chance to talk to him, I had a t-shirt on that says, do not place your limits on me based off of what you are incapable of achieving. And he asked me if he can have it. And I gave it to him. I'm glad I had another shirt on over it. You know, I was like, now, Trump, you know, you already got a trouble with Stormy Downs. Now you asked me to take my shirt off, too. It was fun. He laughed it off and all that great stuff. Yeah. I, some of y'all didn't know that. Yeah. I got to talk with Donald Trump and all that when we went there in 2020. Anywho, my point is saying that is that a lot of times, a lot of things, a lot of things that we do, we mess things up because we put these limits on them. I don't do that. Ten year old come and say, I want to be a doctor. Hey. If there's a doctor that's just doing a thing post surgery, you know, shout out to my guy, father like mine, to me, Dr. Beckton. If Dr. Beckton, hey, doc, I got 10 kids from the ages of 10 to 13. They just want to follow you around the office, just see what you do post surgery with, with orthopedics and all that. Can they do that? He'll say, yeah, bring the kids in. He goes in at the kids, watch what he do. That sparks something in them. Some of these kids, y'all, a lot of people are born with gifts. A lot of us are born with things that we already have a drive in us. You have like I've all to me as since I was a kid, I've always had the inclination. I just liked helping people. I enjoy. I was a kid that would mow your lawn. I was a kid that would knock on your door. I was a kid that if I seen you carrying groceries, I just wanted to help. That was me. I'm the, still the person that my wife, my wife rolls her eyes all the time. Whenever I see somebody on the side of the road, she's like, oh, my God, are you getting ready? Yep. She's like, well, my wife will look out. She'll say, well, Ty, there were two men with them. So I think they're OK. Then I'm like, OK, good. I'm still that person today. I have videos on my channel right now, y'all. I can show y'all videos where I saw a woman walking down the street. She was bleeding. Her boyfriend tried to kill her. I put her in my truck. I got it on my channel right now. That's why I tell y'all you need to check everything out on the channel. I got it on my channel right now where somebody on our job, she didn't have the most money, whatever like that. She needed her car fixed. The car place lied to her. It's going to be like $900 to change this woman's stuff on her car. And all she needed was a spark plug. I got it on my channel. I went right to AutoZone with her. I changed her spark plug right there on the spot. I've always had a thing to help people with. I don't expect nothing back. It was just a drive in me. I love helping people and seeing people do well, right? So the issue is that a lot of people don't do that. All of us have a different gift, a different talent, a different ability. And all you need to do is make sure you put these people, put these kids with the right people who is going to bring out more of that potential that's in them. But telling them things like, oh, it's hard. Oh, it's hard. No. See, when you do that, it instantly puts something in the person's mind, especially as a kid. No kid wants to hear about nothing being hard. No, I tell them, oh, it's easy. Yeah, it's just going to take some time. And they don't care. They don't care. Have y'all ever done? That's what I'm saying. That's what I said in the beginning of my channel, in the beginning of the show. A lot of things that you can master, a lot of things that you can completely change the world with can start in your home. I learned so many lessons as a father, as a husband right here in my home have any of you any of you that got children my sons didn't care my son wanted to build this crazy connects it's like called connect text or something like that he he had a huge connect text that he wanted to build and this whole connect text like was like a freaking fair like there was a darn merry-go-round and there was a dang on um gosh the ferris wheel a roller coaster now, what I told my son when he first said that, I want to build this whole thing. I didn't say, no way, that's going to be hard. I didn't say any of that. I said, oh, you want to do that? He was like, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. I took the time, me and my son, he was about seven years old. We built a whole goddamn home, <laughs> a whole dang on theme park that took us like two and a half months to do it. But guess what? Every day he got from school, what he wanted to do? I want to do my homework. He played. Dad, are we going to be able to go and keep on working on the on working on the magical land? Yeah. Me and my son sitting there building this whole thing that took us two and a half months. Connect text. 
Now, what if I would have said to my son, oh, I don't know, son, that's a lot of pieces. No, that's going to be too hard. No, I don't think you can do that. No, maybe some other time. See what I'm saying? A lot of things are learned at home. So the lesson I learned in that is that anytime a person is interested in doing something and they really driven by and they really passionate, my son wanted to build that Connect Text theme park. He didn't care how long it took because he wanted it to be done. He wanted to finish it. He wanted to do it. And we did it. So when you got these young kids wanting to tell you what they want to be, I don't say, well, you got to pull your bootstraps up and work hard. Now, I know adults, adults should understand that. But children, no. You want to be a doctor? Oh, well, yeah. Hey, I'll get you with a doctor. Now, you would, oh, you like, oh, I want to be strong and I like to be a fireman. I want to like, because when our house, we have some people in our, in our neighborhood, their house burned down and I want to make sure that don't happen. Well, guess what? You can be a fireman. You want to go, you want to, hey, we're going to set y'all up to go there and talk with the firemen. These kids look at these people as heroes. And that's what sparks it. They see firemen out there with their axe and all that. These little kids like, yeah, I want to be a fireman. That's where you get them at. It sparks something in them. Firemen, police, no matter what, they look like heroes to these kids. Well, I don't know if you want to be no fireman. Shoot, that, that job is dangerous. Look at you already shutting down what that kid possibly wanted to do. Don't put your limits on me based off of what you are incapable of achieving which is why I have my channel, which is why I do so much. I'm not going to let anybody limit me on anything at all. If it's something that Ty Smith can do, I'm going to take a shot at it and do it. You guys see the whole channel. Do what, what do, what, what do you, what, Ty, you're funny, you're smart, you uh, make people laugh, you can be serious, you give out counseling, you mentor these kids, you are director of multiple facilities, do you are a radio show host, you travel around and go to speaking engagements, you want to know why? I live by that statement. Don't put your limits on me based off of what you are incapable of achieving. I can do all those things because I don't limit myself. I can do all those things because I try those things out and there's some things that don't work. Oh, and I'm a musician. I play the keyboard, drums, bass, organ, and piano. Now, what if I was to let somebody tell me just stick to one thing? No, you stick to one thing. We can't do that anymore, folks. So what I'm saying is for overall, this whole thing that we see right here, what this woman is doing, when you always want to find some shape, form of fashion of a reason and an excuse. All those reasons this user is going to do is keep you exactly where you are at. I was told, man, I don't know, man. Uh, college ain't for folks like us. Them folks raise the hell. Always. No, man, yeah. They say, hey, they say when you go to college, man, them white folks go, I was being told this stuff, y'all, while going through college. I wasn't even at I wasn't even through college. I didn't even, like, I haven't even heard of it yet. But I was telling me, I got these letters right here. I got these letters right here. Uh, I got these letters right here from college. Oh, no, you don't want to go to college, man. That's That ish is hard. See, already. Already. That ish is hard. None of you Negroes in the hood, what I'm talking, who telling me about this. None of y'all ever been to college. None, some of y'all didn't even graduate high school. Y'all telling me, no, that college stuff hard, man. Y'all never been. Oh, man, they say when you go to college, them white folks going to be... Them white, them white folks going to be what? Them white folks going, man, them white folks, man, that's all they kept on saying. Them white folks going already putting limits on me because they weren't able to achieve it. Now, what would have happened if I would have took that in what they said to me? What would have happened? I wouldn't have the two degrees at all. I wouldn't even be where I am right now career-wise if I would have listened to them. They had all the answers. And guess what? To this day, when I tell you, that being a victim, always saying that something is wrong, always looking for an excuse, always looking for something to blame. Where is it going to get you? Nowhere. Those same exact people who would disagree with me right now. I guarantee you nothing has progressed in their lives. All of you who are all about Black Lives Matter, all of you who were marching in the streets over George Floyd, all of you who are burning down police precincts, defund the police. Oh, yeah, this is some momentum for black people. Change is going to come. Negroes, where are y'all at right now? What's changed? I'll wait. Huh? What's changed? 
how how much better are y'all now, black folks? Huh? How much how, how much better are y'all right now, black people? Huh? Oh, I thought I thought you I, I thought that uh Biden was gonna give y'all reparations. Oh, I thought Newsom was gonna give y'all reparations. Where y'all at now? Well, at least we uh at least y'all what? The George Floyd stuff, the BLM, the burning down stuff, beating up people, tearing down your own businesses, mom and pop shops of black people to stay in your neighborhoods. What did that accomplish? What did it accomplish? Negroes, let me tell you what y'all are going to accomplish. Getting replaced. They are, ooh, that, this system that she talking about, oh, yeah, this system that she talking about, right? I could talk about this because Chi-Town is where, you know, Chi-Town, we live there. My brother was born there. Got a ton of family living there right now. I don't know why, but, no, Chicago, look, Chicago is bad. But it all your world can be completely different based off of where you live. Eh? If you live in Tinley Park, Naperville, Wambasi, Chicago is not even, you know, you don't even feel like you're in Chicago, which you don't. My point is saying it is this. You have a black mayor there right now, Brandon Johnson. When you can sit there and watch black kids go into stores, tearing things up. When you have the Stango community saying these black kids, well, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's make, let's make, let's not call them that. The problem that we have, no, 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 no. Black people, mark my words. I'm telling you, be pissed off at me right now all you want to. You Negroes are being replaced by immigrants. You think it's all about asylum seeking? You think it's all about trying to find a play? Oh, no, no, Negroes, you are being replaced and you are going to be considered irrelevant. That's why right now, the fact that y'all are in Chicago crying, I just spoke there a few, the fact that y'all are sitting there crying right now, our schools, we don't feel safe. That's why they laughing at y'all. They're like, what, you know, Negroes, y'all don't feel safe. When have y'all ever felt safe? Now y'all want to cry because the illegals are coming to Chicago and doing the same thing y'all Negroes been doing? I thought this is what y'all want. Oh, it is what y'all want. You want to know why? You voted it in. We want to be in a, we want to be a sanctuary city. Let them, y'all didn't, y'all, you Negroes didn't even read policy and they relied on you Negroes not reading policy. All they know, if we put somebody there that look just like you Negroes, y'all going to vote for them. And y'all did. How come nothing changed? What? You voted for it. What do you mean? Why hasn't anything changed? This is what y'all wanted. No, it's not uh, based off your vote. Yes, it is. <laughs> what? You see what I'm saying? What? That should be an insult on your intelligence. That they can play these same exact games on us. And we keep on doing it. That's why we just struggling. We disadvantaged. We don't even got schools because y'all keep voting for it. Y'all don't want better schools. Y'all said, okay. I know I told y'all this stuff be, this stuff, this stuff can just, you can, you can, you can break this stuff down on such an easy layman term level to get people to understand. But what people have been taught to do with individuals like myself, because of how I'm coming off, they are focused on that. How come you always talking about black people? You always putting black people down. You all there you go again with the subconscious mind of trying to divert from the truth. I'm telling you. But see, I don't give a crap. You either do it or you don't. Otherwise, if you keep shut up, I'm moving on. And look, I look, y'all, I know y'all think, and I'm just telling y'all, my, ment my my mentees will tell y'all. Whenever I'm breaking them, I am not the nicest person in the world, y'all. I promise you. I am not the nicest person in the world, and I have a nonchalant attitude. I don't give a good God dang on care how you think it's going to hurt your feelings when I'm breaking them. I'm talking about when I'm breaking them. When I'm getting ready to get rid of a bad attitude, bad behavior, a bad train of thought, when I'm getting ready to implement things to the subconscious, get rid of that trash that they've been taught on the streets, I am not a nice person at all. I Y'all y'all wouldn't even want to see that part. I'm just being real. My mentees, my mentees know. But once I break them out of that, and they get to actually get them blinders off their eyes. And they get to see the world for what it really is. I love those moments. And once they do cross over that, nothing can hold those kids back to the extent that their own parent can't even do it. 
We have some kids that we mentored out of Decatur in Chicago. They have gone on. Some of them moved out of the state, got families, got biz construction company. One is an accountant or whatever, doing good. And it's amazing that when they done that, the, I told them, when y'all do this and get away from this, watch how much love the hood have for you. Watch how much love the black folks have for you. All because you did exactly what they complained we can't do. Y'all went on and did it. And look how they're going to treat y'all. Y'all became husbands. Y'all became wives. Y'all got families. Y'all doing good financially. Y'all have homes. And the minute you do that, the same place that y'all came out of, the same dudes that y'all grew up in the hood, the same sisters you grew up around in the hood, they're going to hate you because you succeeded. And yet at the same time, they cry about that's what they want to do. See what I'm saying? There's no winning. And that's why you got to have the attitude of I don't give a good goddamn on care. And I don't. You will never be able to make a person like Ty Smith feel bad that I might not be coming to the hood. You will never make me feel bad about me not coming there and trying. I don't. Boy, please. I see past all the BS. You are not going to make me feel bad because you say a slogan. You might be skin folk, but you ain't kid folk. So? See, they get pissed off when I do it. I'm like, okay, Ann. <laughs> they get mad. You don't even represent black people. I don't even know why you're up there talking. You know, oh, you talking about y'all type of black people? You right. No, I don't. Okay, try again. Nigga, you are Uncle Tom. Yeah, I sure am. Matter of fact, um, got the cup. You, you know what I'm saying? Keep Come on, keep it coming. Do you even know who Uncle Tom was and what he did? Have you even read Uncle Tom's Cabin? Oh, no. You just know that that's something you're supposed to call a black person like me. Oh, right, man, y'all black people. You, you, you a bootlicker. What does that mean, sir? Oh, you read the brochure of slogans and the brochure of insults you're supposed to throw at black successful people. Come on, try again, Negro. Oh, wait, you, you live where now? See, I was just gonna say, if we want to go there, I'll go there. Oh, 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 homes in three different states, huh? Oh, four different vehicles, huh? And you where? You in the hood, yes, yeah, stay there. See, well, see, that's messed up. No, no, if you want to play those, oh, you didn't think I can roast you back, huh? Oh, you didn't think I would be able to dismantle you when you're trying to come at me. Oh, you don't like that. You don't like the fact that you thought that this Negro was just going to sit here and you're going to throw shots at me, but I can't throw him back. Oh, oh, how many roaches you got now? Huh? Huh? How's that water when you turn? Does it come out yellow a little bit first before it runs clear? Huh? See what I'm saying? Man, that's messed up, Ty. No, if you want to go there with me, play games with you, I'm letting you know I'm not the one because I'm not no person of no reputation or no politician. I will flame you right back and make you feel bad about Look, I'm not about to go back home to holes in the wall and a piss smelling apartment or nothing like that. I'm not going. I'm not going back to live and thinking if I open up the cabinet, the roaches gonna fall out. I'm not going. But you are. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. See what I'm saying? This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. When you go there with me, and I realize that we're not trying to come to a compromise, and you just want to try to throw shots at me and throw and throw some blows, and I will throw them right back at you. And what's weird about that? After you do something like that, I'm just telling y'all. After you do something like that, a lot of times. You earn their respect. I know it's weird, y'all. It's a street thing. It's a street thing. It's a street thing. All of a sudden, they look at you different because they expect me to sit there and take it like these other folks have. They expect me to sit there and just take all this stuff they said about me, calling me a boot licking, calling me tap dancing for the white man, calling me a coon, a house nigga, and all that. They expect me just to take it. And as soon as I flame them back, all of a sudden, man, you, you, what can you say about me? I mean, going on, which woman am I? Am I just a, am I, am I, am I a tap dancer for the white man? And I just got money and I got conservative views and I got homes and cars. And am I just that? And you just a stuck up the butt black guy and all that. But then when I come back and flame you, what can you say about me now? See what I'm saying? Now what you going to say? Because now people from the hood looking like, Hey, that dude came back and straight got you, bruh. He came back and got you. So wait a minute. Not only is he better than you, not only is he got does he got more money, he got homes and all that, but you going back to the hood. Man, you shouldn't have said that time, and that might have hurt him. So I'm only giving him a taste of the medicine that he tried to throw at me. All because, all because I got all those insults, and a lot of black people like myself, which I know there are some successful ones in here now. You get that all because. You did exactly what every last person in America, be it black, white, Asian, whatever. You did what all of them did. You went after your heart's desire when it came to what type of life and what type of career you wanted to live. And you did it. And because of that, because you decided to do it, 
You catching hate? Not me. See, no, I'm not. Nope, I'm not about to let you do that to me. I'm not about to feel guilty that I got homes and I got cars. I'm not about to feel guilty that I've been married 22 years. I'm not about to feel guilty that I stayed faithful to my wife. I'm not about to feel guilty that I got two sons that don't got no girls pregnant or anything like that. That ain't got no baby. They, they ain't no baby daddies. They don't got girlfriends. They ain't got no drama or anything like that. I'm not about to feel bad about any of that. Are you nuts? Like I'm supposed to feel bad because I did what I'm supposed to do. Try with another Negro. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. When I say that I'm from the streets, I'm telling you, <laughs> I came from the streets. So you got to have this mindset. The ones that are willing to do what they need to do to get where they want to get, I'm with you. The ones that don't, and all you want to do is try to flame me. All you want to do is try to roast me. All you want to do is try to talk about me. If I know the conversation ain't going nowhere, I'm going to cut you off. But if you keep going, I'm going to flame you right back. And now you want, and now and now you get mad, and now you want to be physical. I'm, I, I'll do that too. I'm just, I'm not no politician. Now I'm not going to do anything to get myself like completely like hurt or anything like that. But I do let some people know. Look, bro, you want to beat me up? I promise you, if you want to do that, let's do it. Hey, let's do it on a platonic level. Let's get some. Let's you and I both get some money out of this. Because I've had people say things like, "Man, yeah, you said only be you up there on that stage talking and all that, but uh, you won't say that to my face." Wait, wait a minute, I'm, I'm wait a minute. What you mean I won't say it to your face? I'm saying it to you right now. Yeah, but you won't say it to my face. So wait a minute. You were throwing shots and saying stuff to me from where you're standing. I'm saying the same thing back to you from where I'm standing now because on a mental level, and I got you in your emotions, and you feel like I defeated you on this conversation. Your brain tells you, "Hey, we lost this conversation." You look stupid. So let's want to fight Ty. That's what that's that, that that's the best you can do. And I'm not no small dude, but I'll let them know. If you saying I won't say this to your face, all these people that are standing around here right now, we can arrange something to go to Luke Skywalker's gym and we can have a boxing max, right? We can, let's do it professionally so I can whoop you so you can see all those things that you called me. Yeah, see what I'm saying? You call me Uncle Tom, porch negro, boot licking. Tap dance for the white man, a coon. And now all these people are getting ready to see you get knocked out by me too? Bro. Well, whatever. See, I, I didn't think so. I'm telling y'all. I just want to, I'm not the I'm I'm not the one. I'm not the baddest man in the world. Yes, everybody can get their butts whooped. I'm just giving y'all examples of the heckling and type of things that I deal with when I go and talk. And whenever I do things like this, I let them also know I'm not talking. If you, are, are you trying to grow or not? Anything that's not growing is dying. Anything that's not growing is retarded. Now, I'm not listening, y'all. When I say retarded, I literally mean retarded. You look up what retarded means. Slow, stunted growth. Anything that's not growing is retarded. Anything that's not growing is dying. Anything that's not growing is stagnant. And I don't want to be a part of anything that's not growing. Why would, why would, why should we? The things that a lot of black people are crying over right now. Has there been progress? Black people from the late 1800s all the way up to the 1950s were progressing and had progress to the extent to where they were called the new middle class of America. Black people were called the new middle class of America. 1950s, something shifted. Now we struggling like we was, we, was, we struggling as if we was in the slave days and constantly struggling. Why hasn't there been no progress? Because they got you here. They got you to do nothing more than to talk about it. Y'all right now, if I had a scar and an open wound right here and all I kept on telling y'all, look at this scar. Y'all, look at this scar. I'm hurt. Y'all, look at this scar. Y'all, look at this scar. I'm hurt. Look at this scar. You're going to be like, dude, are you going to fix it or are you going to keep on crying about it? What you going to do? So you racist. Wait, what? Why? Because a white person told you to fix it? I'm a black man complaining about this scar. Look at this. I'm bleeding. A white person come up and say, go get it fixed. Well, who are you to tell me what to do? Are you, are you, see, that's the problem. Y'all oppressing us. Oh my God. All because a white person offered you the answer. Now they racist. Now you see what I'm saying? This is crazy. To me, there is also racial dysphoria. There ain't just gender dysphoria. There is racist. This, there is racial dysphoria you are just taught to see nothing but racism in everything black person disagrees with you 
You don't care. A white person disagrees with you. Oh, that's because you're racist. Black person disagrees with you. You don't care. A white person disagrees with you. What do you do? See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all just think y'all got this supremacy over. What? Because they disagree? This is how far gone a lot of y'all are in the head. And the so-called system that you think is that you're fighting against, that system is the very thing that implemented that into your mind. That's why you're not growing. That's why you're not moving. That's why you're stagnant. Man, we tired of these disadvantaged areas. Who chose to live there? We don't want to live here no more. Don't live there. Well, the job I work at will get a better job. Well, the job that you talked about requires me to get a degree. Well, go to get a degree. What? How do you get to your job? I don't even have a car. Well, how do you get to your job? I take a bus. Isn't that peculiar? So wait a minute. You were able to figure out that in order for you to get to your job, you didn't have a car. But in order for you to get to the job, you figure out how to use the bus system to get to your job. That's what I'm talking about. Now that you got that under control, how about saving your money so you can get a car, so you can drive yourself there? How do I do that? Easy. Don't go buy no alcohol. Don't go out to eat. Every bit of money that you get, save it. Well, Todd, you got to have some fun sometimes, not if you're trying to get where you need to get. No. You can all, yeah, there's going to be times where you're going to be able to go out to eat more. There's going to be times you're going to be able to do things recreational. But as of right now, you trying to get out the situation, you need to save every bit. Of, there ain't no getting no nails done, sisters. There ain't no getting your weed done, sisters. There ain't no getting your lashes and your feet done. No. Save your money so you can get out of the hood. It's not hard. But you choose to stay there. Why? You know good and well them incentives that they're giving you, the free phone, the Section 8, the welfare, huh? the food stamps, the WIC. Whew, too easy. Too easy. So all this bull crap that y'all want to come to me and y'all cry about, all this bull crap that you want to be better, all this bull crap, but we can't even, that's because you choose not to. It's a choice. No, it's not. Some people can't see. That's what I'm saying. Somebody made you a professional excuse maker. That's all you are. Make up an excuse like this woman. Larry Elder sitting there giving the answer. But that's not a, but that's not, but that's not, you're not even trying to hear the answers. You want to stay exactly where you at. And that's why she's going to stay where she at on a mental level. And then she tried to give herself more credit. Well, these, I talked to false, I talked to Fox News. I did this. I did this. So I already know. I already know. No, you don't. Because if you did, your mindset would be completely different. Everything they are doing to you guys. Up is down, down is up. Fat people are not fat. They have a disease. Y'all, y'all getting, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They have convinced the world that fat people is not their fault. They have a disease? What? Everything y'all I'm telling you right now is about that dollar. If y'all don't hear nothing that I say for the rest of this night, it comes down to money, 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 which the Bible said the love of it is the root of all evil. Obesity is now a disease. Being an alcoholic is a disease. But if you think that you are a woman, but you are born a man, that's not a that's not an issue. <laughs> what? Children that think that they are animals and a parent tried to take the child to a veterinarian? That parent doesn't have a problem. What? This is where we at right now. This is what they're doing to you. I'm telling you, so it's, the, it's crazy. I treat crazy people as such. Obesity is a goddamn on disease. Come on, man. No, you like eating. That's what I'm saying. The problem will never be able to get solved if you don't want to address that there actually is a problem. If you are an alcoholic, you have to first acknowledge and address the fact that you are an alcoholic and how it's ruining your life. If you are a person that's severely overweight or like in medicine, we call it morbidly obese. You have to acknowledge that that's what it is. But if they can play off you guys' mind and say it's not your fault, it actually is a disease. You know what they're going to do? They're going to treat it medicinally. You about to be their pharmaceutical crackhead for the rest of your life. That's all you're going to be because all you are is just cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. And I know 
Y'all, some of y'all that are listening on this right now, everybody is for this because some of y'all try to turn me into the AMA. It didn't work. Some of y'all try to turn me into the FSBPT. It didn't work. Because what I'm saying is actually true. Plain and simple. And right now, up is down, down is up. Men are women, women are men. There's 39 million, Danny, Danny, Danny. that's an infinity number of genders. This is where y'all are right now, America. This is where y'all are, America. This is what they got y'all. They are telling you that you ain't gonna be you, you won't be able to talk the way you want to talk. If there's a man that has a if there's a grown man, they're telling you you better not call him a man if he wants you to call him a woman. And y'all are doing it. Please. Please. I play the game right back. I know, not me, folks. Not me. That's absolutely ridiculous where we at right now. So anyway, I went longer than what I was supposed to, y'all. Go ahead and read off. Uh, okay. Cookie. God bless you for sending in the cash app. It's right there for the one. And then I got an email that asked me. There it is right there. It's, it's, it's just this. It's the cash app and it's Modern Renaissance, man. If y'all want to send it through there, God bless you. Thank you. I'm just reading them off right now before we uh, uh, close it out. And don't forget to hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Okay. Don't forget to hit that like button. You know what? Give me a second here. I'll tell y'all what. Again, yeah, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, Duo. Appreciate the super chat. Not the super chat. Appreciate the cash app. God bless you. And I thank you for sending that in. King Theo. God bless you for sending in the cash app. Really, really appreciate that. Donald. God bless you. Thank you for sending in the cash app. God bless you. Cash Cash sent in a cash app. God bless you. And I really, really, I guys, I really do appreciate the cash apps y'all sending in here. I really do appreciate that. Thank y'all for being able to let me buy some gas, get some gas using E85. No, I'm just, all right. Uh clock knock with the cash app. God bless you. Thank you for sending in the cash app. Got a few more here. Uh Leah, Leah, God bless you. Thank you for sending in the cash app. Uh, Tori with the cash app says, thank you for your time and what you do. You are a great blessing. You have changed a lot of things in my home as a man. And as a father, you have no idea. I sent you an email. Hey, glad to hear that, man. And God bless you for that. And finally, I don't know how to say this. Shadoa? Shadoa? (laughs) <laughs> Shadoa with the cash app. God bless you. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution to the channel. And any of you guys that support the channel, everybody that's out there listening to me right now. I really, really do appreciate y'all. I really, really do appreciate y'all. Mark with the $10 super chat said from Utah, sir, Mark, I really appreciate you. Uh, I see you in here a lot, Mark. I see a lot of your comments on the different videos and things that I make. I appreciate your engagement, guys. I really do. When you guys, like when I do, like I know I've been doing things lately. You guys have been sending a lot of shorts and things that are funny. I do that to balance things out because I still let people see that there's another side of me. Some people came into my channel a little late as far as years go, and they see me doing a lot of things regarding things going on in the world, a lot of things were going on uh, politically. A lot of people know me from the reactions and all that. Some people didn't even know that I even have a comedy side to me or anything like that. So that's why I do a lot of those shorts. I do things that kind of let you guys laugh and everything too to let you see that I'm not just this serious person. In other words, I told you, I can't be limited. You can't box me. So I just want to let you guys know that when y'all do engage in a lot of things that I post on my channel, when you guys leave comments, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, uh, Siftida says, thank you, Ty. Keep the faith. May have come around already because you and people here, you're... You're a real support for us. Hey, I appreciate that. I really do. All the comments you guys are saying, you know, I really, I really, really, really do appreciate everything that you guys are saying in here. Uh, Don't forget before y'all head out of here, hit that thumbs up button, hit that like button. You guys all have a cell phone. Most of y'all have a cell phone, right? If you have a cell phone, if you have a cell phone, make sure you let people that have the same mindset that loves to hear truth, need help, et cetera, et cetera, please let them know about this channel because you guys will be responsible for this message being spread, all of this. You guys will be solely responsible for that. I'm just one man and you guys are many. There's uh, There was like a hundred and some odd people in here 
Um, there's a hundred and some odd people in here. And just imagine if just every last one of y'all just told one person to come and subscribe to the channel. Y'all just got me a hundred subs just like that. Right. So really, really appreciate you guys all being in there. Shout out to all of you guys in there. Uncle, appreciate you being in here, sir. Mama Carol, my uh, moderator, some of y'all well-known names, Winch, William Lynn, Binary B. Some of y'all just name off Mama Don, Beth Mitchum, Scarlett, uh, Moe's Game. And I remember you being in here. T-Rex, I know that you one of the ones that's always here. The Winch, Mark again, Michael, I know Lessons. I, I told you I can just fire some of y'all names off. Jamie. Uh oh my guy Reckless Ray y'all go check out Reckless Ray as well Reckless Ray has his own YouTube go check Reckless Ray out go check out Unifier TV go check out Anton Daniels check out the Aaron O show check out um um who am I missing Raw B check her out uh, appreciate if y'all go and do that don't forget hit that thumbs up before y'all check out of here uh, and like I say with all the things I do on here and I really mean it. I'm Ty Smith, model renaissance man, and I hope and pray every last one of you guys have food, shelter, and clothing. And most of all, I really hope and pray that every last one of you guys are in great health, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. God bless you all through Jesus.